Hey everyone and welcome back to Hoffman Engineering. If you've ever wanted to dip your toes into CNC machining but felt overwhelmed by the size, noise, or price of most routers out there, this video is for you. Today we're taking a deep dive into the SaneSmart Genmitsu Cubico, a fully enclosed, desktop-friendly CNC router that's compact enough to sit on your workbench, but capable enough to handle woods, acrylics, and even aluminum, if you're feeling brave. I've spent the last month putting this little machine through its paces, from engraving hardwoods to carving PCBs and pushing it to its limits on metal. So whether you're a total beginner or just looking for a low-cost way to get back into CNC, the Cubico just might surprise you. So let's jump in. Before we begin, this Cubico was provided for me to review by SaneSmart. As with all of my reviews, they aren't paying me for this review, and everything I say is my own honest opinion after using this CNC router for the last month. My videos do have affiliate links in the description, so if you're interested in anything you see in any of my videos, from CNC's, materials, or accessories, you can use those links to help support my channel. We appreciate it. Let's get into it. The Genmitsu Cubico is a a compact benchtop CNC router. CNC routers are subtractive machining, using a spinning end mill to carve away material. The Cubico is designed for cutting woods, plastics, and soft metals like aluminum. The Cubico is a fully enclosed machine. With the lid on, it does an excellent job at containing the chips and dust while working, and then the lid can be lifted off for easy access to the inside. One of the main benefits of the Cubico is its compact size. The entire machine is only 300 millimeters by 335 millimeters by 318 millimeters, and it only weighs 7.85 kilograms. This makes it very easy to find a home on your desk or workbench, or to store it out of the way when not in use. There is a switch at the top that detects if the lid is on or off, and will automatically pause the job when the cover is lifted. I've heard other reviewers comment that the lid is flexible enough to not always fully press that switch, but I had no issues with that. The lid always seated properly, and fully engaged with the switch. There is a little groove around the base that the lid fits into however, and that groove is a magnet for chips that fall in when you lift the lid. So be sure to vacuum out that groove every time, and then the lid will seat properly. The Cubico has a work area of 150mm by 110mm by 40 millimeters tall. While that's a small work area compared to full-size benchtop CNC routers, that work area is surprisingly useful. The Cubico has an aluminum work surface, with a series of M5 threaded holes for work holding. They include two aluminum clamps and a number of different length screws for holding the material down on the plate. Or you can always do what I prefer, and use X-Fasten double-sided tape to secure your material. Double-sided tape works surprisingly well on the Cubico. I didn't have any materials become detached. When using the clamps, you don't want the screws to be too long to poke out the bottom of the work surface and dig into the base. So SaneSmart includes five different length bolts to help with that. But for some reason, they only include three of each length along with the two clamps. When clamping taller pieces like this aluminum block, I would have liked to have four of the longest bolts. Instead, I have to use two of the slightly shorter bolts, which left me at a weird angle. Just a strange decision. At the back right of the work surface is the auto Z-probe point. Then you can trigger the Z-probe, which will move the tool over to that spot and lower it until it touches the point. Then the Cubico knows exactly how long your tool is to get that Z0 position perfect. That probe can also be used to generate a full height map on conductive materials. This is perfect for PCB milling where the depth that you are engraving is very important. You have to use the included probe cable and attach the alligator clip to your tool and the Y connector to the aluminum plates. Before probing, you specify the dimensions and the number of points to probe. And then by probing that number of points over the surface of your material, it knows how the height of the surface varies. It will then automatically compensate for that as it engraves, ensuring a consistent engraving depth. When using the height map with the V-bit, it will leave little pinpricks on the top of your surface. I'm not sure how deep those are, but they are easy to spot at the right angle. Just be sure to remove the cable before you start your job. Thankfully, this job has a built-in hold command. I'm sure just for this exact situation. It could have been much worse. Just in case, there is also a red emergency stop button on the machine's right side. The Cubico has a 75 watt spindle with a max spindle speed of 10,000 RPM. It comes with an ER11 collets for 1 8 inch or 3 mm tool shaft diameters. I found the spindle to be reasonably powerful for the types of material that the Cubico is designed for. I'm sure you can stall the spindle by crashing it down into steel, but the spindle kept up to speed while depth cutting hardwoods. Saint Smart includes a set of 7 1 8 inch 20 degree V bits and 3 drill bits. The V-bits are perfect for engraving, and you can always purchase any type of bit that you need for your project. I picked up this variety pack of 1 8 inch bits, also from Genmitsu. 
the ball end mills worked well for these contour engravings. You can control the Cubico in a variety of different ways. The control panel at the front is magnetically attached and is easy to detach for handheld operation. The full colored LCD panel gives you information about position, speeds, and feeds, as well as having options for homing and the Auto Z probe. You can also insert a micro SD card on the side and use the panel to start and stop jobs for offline engraving. It feels a little lightweight and flimsy in your hand, but it gets the job done. The Cubico can also be controlled via the Genmitsu mobile app for iOS and Android. This app lets you connect the Cubico to your Wi-Fi network, and then you have full remote control over the machine. You can home and jog, start and stop the spindle, start the Z-probe, and even start jobs saved to the Cubico's SD card. The mobile app also has a built-in material and bit reference, with speeds and feeds for many of Genmitsu's end mills and bits. That is a wealth of information to get a solid starting point for speeds and feeds based on your material. Finally, you can connect the Cubico to your computer via USB for full control over the machine. You can use any Gerbil compatible software to control the Cubico. SaneSmart gives you a few options in their quick start guide, and include copies of Candle and Universal G-Code Sender on the SD card. I really like UGS, and did most of my testing with it. This isn't a review of UGS specifically, but it gives you all of the controls you need to home and zero the machine. Opening up a G-Code file gives you the file contents that you could edit, as well as a G-Code visualizer. It made it very easy to start and stop jobs. Actually generating the G-code is another story. Creating toolpaths for CAM is a skill set all of its own, and will take time to master to get the most out of your CNC. SaneSmart has guides for popular CAM packages like Fusion 360, Easel, and VCarve, so you can read through those to get an idea for how to start. I've been using Curie Moto, which is a simple browser-based CAM, which also integrates into Onshape. My CNC skills were about a decade out of practice before I started testing the Cubico, but that documentation really helped refresh my memory and get started generating decent G-code files. So let's take a look at some examples from the SaneSmart Genmitsu Cubico CNC. First up, engraving with the included V-bits. Overall, you can get some pretty good results with engraving text, but a lot of it will come down to what type of wood you use. The Jinmitsu test file cut on the included 3mm plywood came out pretty rough, as did my Hoffman engineering text, but running the same file on some hardwoods turned out pretty good. Profiling with a flat end mill also greatly depends on your material. This pine used for framing is not ideal for CNC work, a lot of tear out. Moving back to a harder wood, this roughing is much better. However, the triangular pockets on the left side mostly tore away probably due to cutting such thin walls diagonal to the grain. I also don't know exactly what happened on the circle and square. It looks like the y-axis shifted on that first cut layer, leaving a small step onto the second layer. But the rest of the cut is unaffected by that though. And the pocket on the right side has a pretty smooth bottom, although the edges could be cleaner. I love contouring woods on the Cubico. It's hard to show the 3D contour on camera, but the 1 8 inch ball end mill did a good job at contouring these designs. This first design on oak showed the filigree pretty well, although some of the detail is just too fine for a 1 8 inch ball end mill. But the Cubico was able to do the roughing cut to remove the bulk of the material, and then finish with the contouring pass. This koi fish on poplar turned out amazingly well. Most of the engraving is extremely smooth, and the details of the scale of the fish even show through. Some of the steeper areas have some fraying left over, but a little fine grit sandpaper will clean those up easily. This was a great result, and it took about two hours to engrave. Foam is also no match for the Cubico. This polystyrene foam board was fun to cut through, although forgive my G-code for not entirely cutting around the Pentagon. The contour cut on this text was also fun to watch. The foam just peeled away. The draft angle on these letters are 9 degrees, and the contour cutting did an easy job with it. Cleaning up afterwards is also satisfying. The Cubico can do PCB milling, and thanks to the height map, it can pretty consistently cut the traces. There are a few areas where the sample PCB test file didn't entirely close the outline. It doesn't appear to be a G-code issue, but I'm not sure if that's a discrepancy due to my zeroing of the V-bit, the height map, or something else innate to the machine. Designing PCBs are a little out of my wheelhouse though, so I'll have to leave that to people with more experience than I. And speaking of needing experience, here's a block of aluminum. SaneSmart says that the Cubico can handle soft metalworking. I have no aluminum CNC experience, so I threw on a 1 8 inch titanium coated end mill, turned it up to 10,000 RPM at 100 millimeters per minute, and a 0.1 millimeter depth of cut, and hoped for the best. And to my surprise, the Cubico did cut through the aluminum without immediately snapping the bit. It cut 2 millimeters deep in just under an hour. You can tell the machine did not enjoy this though. It sounded rough, and you can see the bit and the spindle deflecting while moving. 
So while you can technically work with aluminum on a Cubico, you'll be going very slow and don't forget your hearing protection. Speaking of sound, SaneSmart claims that the full enclosure of the Cubico makes it low noise, but that's not really the case. With the lid on and just the spindle running at 10,000 RPM, it's at about 70 decibels. While engraving, spikes up to 80 decibels are not uncommon, with 83 decibels while cutting aluminum. The surface the Cubico is resting on has a lot to do with it, as your table can amplify these vibrations. And the top panel can also vibrate sometimes. I found placing a roll of double-sided tape can dampen those sounds. You definitely wouldn't want this running in your home office next to you for hours at a time. So in conclusion, I found the Gen Mewtwo Cubico by SaneSmart to be an excellent beginner CNC router. If you are looking to dip your toes into CNC, but don't quite know where to start, this could be a great low-cost option to get you some experience. The fully enclosed desktop design is nice, and it does a great job at containing the chips while taking up minimal space on your bench. The flexibility to control via the control panel, mobile app, or computer is very convenient and the auto probe and height map make the delicate work of PCB milling possible on this machine. As someone who has a small amount of CNC experience from a decade ago, it was a good platform to shake those cobwebs off and get back into it. The software side of CAM has always been the hard part for me. As someone who's seen the massive improvements in the 3D printer space over the last decade, both from the mechanical side, but especially the slicer side, I can't wait to see the same for the CNC space. But I feel that hasn't changed much from what I was working with a decade ago. So just be aware that while the Cubico is technically a plug-and-play machine, actually creating designs to cut will take some time and energy to learn how to do it effectively. And the Cubico is not the most rigid machine. Don't expect to do much metalworking with this. While it can technically do some aluminum, it won't cut fast with a good surface finish. But softer materials like woods, acrylics, and foams work very well. For small projects that fit within the work area, think coasters, soap dishes, signs, and the like, the Cubico could be that first machine to act as a stepping stone to larger and more capable CNC routers. If you're aware of its limitations, then the Cubico will treat you well. The Gen Mitsu Cubico CNC router is on sale for $349 US dollars at the time of recording. The optional accessories are insanely low priced. The upgrade 20,000 RPM spindle is $21, the drawing tool is $32, and the dust shoe is $16, and the 5.5 watt laser module is $80. At $350, this is one of, if not the lowest price entry level CNC routers on the market. If you want to learn a new skill, but don't want to shell out a few thousand dollars for a CNC router, then the Cubico could be the CNC router for you. So thank you all for watching my review of the SaneSmart Genmitsu Cubico CNC router. What was your favorite feature? What features do you think it's missing? Let me know in the comments below. I have plenty of upcoming projects and reviews, so be sure to subscribe to Hoffman Engineering so you don't miss out on those videos coming soon. So thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.